What I want to talk about today is the fake ass American economy. There are many pundits that were saying before the virus that the economy was doing fine. I have been talking about a recession that was coming for two years based upon economic indicators. What's going on? This is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. Welcome to another episode of Hustlers Kung Fu, which was brought to you by Hustlers Kung Fu Lifeskills.com, where we have a lot of courses to teach you how to make money, how to have a better life, and how to get your finances in order. And right now, you're beginning to see what I'm talking about. If the American economy was as strong as many of the pundits would have you to believe, right now people wouldn't be suffering. You would know why. Because they would have savings. The average American, 52, 53% of Americans make less than $30,000 a year. That, my friends, is not a ind indicator of a strong economy. Most people are hand to mouth, most, most people are poor. This is why the government did this stimulus package, which right now is looking to be a stunning failure because people are waiting on their money and no money has come as of yet, as of the time of this recording. So right now we have a lot of situations that are going on. We have many people who are hurt, many people who don't have jobs, many people who don't have money. And it's only literally been a few weeks. If the American economy was as strong as people would have you believe it to be, people wouldn't be suffering. People wouldn't be in a position where they were literally going to have to beg the government for money. These businesses, and this is another indicator of how weak the American economy is. There are many small businesses that are going to go out of business. They're going to be done. It's going to be a wrap. And why is it going to be a wrap? Because they had bad money management situations. Uh, there were some businesses that barely made enough money. They were already on the brink. They were economically fragile. But there were many businesses that had money and it was just mismanaged. Because one of the things that I will teach you guys, you can take my courses, is I have a money management course that talks about the segmentation of money. And in our lives, we're going to have these moments where we're not going to be able to work. Last year, I didn't work for five months because I had a heart attack and a stroke. And if I did not have these protocols in place, I would have been in trouble. And here are some things that you've got to start practicing. And one of the things that this great pandemic is going to teach us is that we need to start saving money. And you, on YouTube and the personal finance, you will hear savers or losers. You shouldn't save money. You should invest money. And there is true to a degree, but what's more true is you must be in the proximity to become an investor. And that's what we're going to talk about because this whole thing is exposing the weaknesses in the American economy. It's like exposing the weaknesses in personal finance. It's exposing the weaknesses in businesses. There are many businesses that are not set up properly. They don't deploy proper cash flow management practices. And it's coming home to hunt them during this pandemic. Because I was looking at what's going on in Italy because we can't trust China. China is not going to give us accurate information. China is saying that they've only had 3,000 people that died. And the truth of the matter is, is when you do some investigation and you start looking into Chinese newspapers and listening to people, their deaths are more like 50, 60,000 plus. But you, we're not going to get real data out of China. So we're going to have to look at what's happening with Italy and what's going to happen with the UK for us to get better models because you know China is not going to play fair China is not going to help anyone and right now the Italians and their economy is based upon tourism uh, they're freaking out right now it's been a month it's going on the second month and they are they got people going hungry you've got crime people are tense people are short-tempered and this is just to show you what's going to come to America because the lockdowns are probably going to be extended because right now in New York, the deaths are starting to 
decrease. So one day we had 630 deaths, the next day we had 590. Even though, and this is something that happened in Italy, Italy, the new infection rates decreased, but the death rate was still sky high. So we're going to have this for a minute. And this is just proof that the social distancing protocols, the stay at home protocols are working. But here's another thing that's going, I feel is going to happen. Right now you have many GOP governors who are opening, they're going to try to open up their states. They're really bucking at the guidelines and regulations uh, in Houston, Texas, which was locked down, Erica. Um, the governor has raised up some, um, some of the um, restrictions on constructions. Here's where the danger lies, because this is America, home of the brave, land of the free. We do what we want. We're, we go out, I mean, what I feel is going to happen is that when this positive news of the decrease, the deaths decreasing, but we, we still haven't seen if the infection rate has decreased, that people are going to go back to doing what they're going to do. And this is going to create a second wave of infections. I'm almost going to, I'm almost willing to bet you money that this is going to do it because not only is the American economy is fragile, but the American people are fragile. You just got to stay at home and chill out for a few weeks. And people are acting like this is the greatest hardship in the world. They're behaving as if someone stole their first child and sent them a big ransom note. The American people of today are not like the American people of previous generations. The American people of World War II, where all the men went to war and the women left the homes to go into the factories and people started to save metal and people, it was just a collective nation, nationwide effort. And today, we don't have that in our DNA. Uh, people are very, very fragile. People are very, very um, easy to unsettle because people don't want to do the proper things. Like one of the reasons, like I, I did a video on my other channel, Savage Finance, talking about the 50% solution. Um, shortly after it released, it got two thumbs down. And essentially I was just talking about getting your income to where you could save 50% of your income. Because if you get to a level where you can save 50% of your income, you're never going to be broke. You're never going to have these economic hardships, but people don't want to hear that. They're looking for a solution that they can apply to their current circumstances and escape their current circumstances with little work, with little sacrifice, with little effort. This is what people are looking for. They're looking for microwave solutions. They're looking for quick solutions. And I don't really have any. You know, there are many of you who are new to the channel. Welcome, I appreciate you guys. And many of you are coming here and you're looking for quick, topical solutions and there are none if you're in a situation where you got laid off you don't have any money you're in you, the burglars in your house the beast is in your house the rapist has a knife to your wife's throat and you're tied up in the chair in the corner and you just have to watch what's going to happen that's harsh but that's facts because if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And many people, due to the fragile American economic economy, they weren't in the position to get ready. This is why, you know, I'm, I'm getting so much pushback on these principles, like the 50% solution. A lot of people are like, I don't really want to hear that. What do you mean save half my income? I don't want to hear that. Now, if we were to address this as fire, oh, okay, I'm, I want to do this. I want to save a lot of my income. So I can invest it in the stock market. And that's another mystery. As of last month, we had 10 million people lose their jobs. 10 million plus. Many of these companies are not open. Yet when the stock market got this news, it went up. Which is more of an indication that those 8,000 companies that are represented in the stock market are not the 30 million companies in the US economy. And the 30 million companies, and this is what I look at. 
why are so many people making less than $30,000 a year? Because these businesses, that's all they're paying. That's all they can pay. Because payroll is a super large percent of a business money. It's, 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 a lot of money goes to payroll. When I had my consulting business, I had 12 employees. My, I was spending $50,000 a month on payroll, which is $600,000 a year. And that was really a small, small business. Very, very small. And you, you, right now you have business owners out here who are looking at their responsibility to themselves and their company and their responsibility to their employees. And right now, many employees are like, hey, someone needs to take care of us. And this is one of the reasons that I say that the American public at large is very fragile because we have lost that rugged independence, that rugged individual, individual, individuality. People used to have victory gardens. People used to take pride in being able to take care of themselves. And that is something that is gone. That is something that we just don't typically have as we move forward. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand, what we're going through is not going to be a quick, painless process. And sooner or later, you're going to have to start doing the right things for yourself and your families, or you're going to suffer because I feel there will be a second stimulus. They're already talking about creating a second stimulus package. And the first stimulus package at the time of this video has not even been deployed. No one's gotten any money. And people are, they're, 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 they're raking their cuts, their cups against the prison bars. It's like, hey, hey, where's our money? Where's our money? Like with the economic uh, stimulus package and the $10,000 grant which I went on record on my channel saying I wasn't going to apply for it because I didn't need it and I wasn't going to take money that potentially could go to someone else. As we go down this thing, because this was with the SBA, uh, the conditions have changed. It was written a certain way in the bill, but the SBA is going to do it their way. And if you are a sole proprietor, you're not going to get $10,000. If you're going to get $1,000, if you get anything. And there are many businesses that will qualify for the $10,000. So they're not going to get the $10,000 because here is another issue with American businesses. Many small businesses are not set up correctly. They don't have the paperwork. They don't have the checking accounts. They don't have the forms. If you are going to set up a business in America and you need to play the corporate game, you need to set up a holding company, then an operating company, and then have ADP or QuickBooks, whoever do your pay, you need to have all of that stuff in play. And there are a lot of these companies that don't have that. And when they're going to go to the bank and the bank's going to ask for this form and that form and that form, they're going to be looking at their banker like, where's my $10,000? I was told I was going to get $10,000. You're going to see so many stories when this is over of how people felt that they were going to get this and how the government let them down and how the government and they did not do the right things. Because whenever you're dealing with the small business administration and you're trying to get a loan, your paperwork must be dress right dress. All your T's must be crossed. All your I's must be dotted. And if they're not, they're going to delay your paperwork and they're going to deny your loan. And this is a lesson that many small business owners who have businesses that are not correctly set up, they don't have proper cash flow management. And here's a big one. If you are a profitable business, what many owners are doing, instead of taking that profits and stashing it in an emergency fund, they're living on that money. They're buying Ferraris, they're buying mansions, the wife is taking many trips, and it's, that's all good as long as the economy was chuggling along and everything was good. We've, we've got a monkey wrench in the plan now and your business isn't making any cash and you haven't put any cash away and you've been living on credit. So now you have the expenditures of your business and the debt payments for your credits and no cash. And this is one of the things that I rail against, I talk about and people tune me out, but you've got to practice proper money management protocols. So when times are good, you need to be putting some money away because at some point times are gonna be bad. 
Not necessarily as bad as they're about to be right now, but they're going to be bad. And one of the big things that is happening with so many people, because I, I do polls on my Facebook page, and I put up a poll of why the stock market went up when unemployed, 10 million people lost their jobs. And people was like, well, you know, the American economy's booming. And I'm just sitting there like, what information are you looking at? Because this is one of the things I hate. You have people who are regurgitating information from other ignorant people. I've looked at the data. I can tell you how much money people are making. I can tell you why van life is a big thing. I can tell you this. And there are so many people who are just got their heads in the sand until now they can't breathe. Now they can't breathe with their head in the sand and now they gotta look at reality and reality is very ugly. I'm gonna link the article or I've got it in the community page what's happening in Italy because this is what's going to come here this is what we're going to have here this is where we're going to go because I'm here to tell you this will be extended even if the curve flattens it's going to be extended because the stay-at-home guidelines and the shelter-in-place policies are working because I was looking at a map of the infection rate and the infection rates are in high population states, go figure. And another thing that is going to happen is we can have these states that have relatively little of the virus can become epicenters if people go back to doing what they want to do, which I feel is going to happen for some states because with Mardi Gras, this is why Louisiana is a epicenter because they had Mardi Gras. And New York is an international city. They have people flying in and out. California, you know, if you just look across the map, I'm really interested because we have uh, like 9,000 cases, 9,100 cases here in Georgia. I don't know what that's about, but maybe it came through Hartsville. But you're going to see a certain path of this thing. And hopefully we can keep it tamped down but if we can't keep it town, tamped down, there are places that have relatively little of the virus that are going to explode. And what I feel is going to happen is once we move into the summer months and people are going to go out to the beach, people are going to go camping, people go, this is when it's going to explode again. Because right now, this virus is exploding in Florida, which is a warm weather state. Because there's this uh, false opinion that this virus is going to die down once it gets warm. It's warm in Florida and it's exploding in Florida. It's warm in Florida right now. So that argument doesn't really hunt. That dog doesn't hunt when you're talking about this virus. Once again, you know, you come here, I'm going to talk about the economy. I'm going to talk about real numbers. I'm going to talk about real procedures and real things. Because you need to know the truth. Because there are too many people like the GOP and conservative news outlets, they're painting this narrative. There was this one scientist who said that the shelter at home precautions were going to make the virus last longer because essentially we should unleash people, let people go about their lives, just shelter the elderly and let herd immunity take place. And I was sitting there, how many times have you had a cold? How many times have you caught the flu? There is no herd immunity for these type of things. And I'm just sitting there, they're just passing it on like, hey, we go out and do what we wanna do. Cause you can get a cold over and over again. You can get the flu over and over again. And there have been people who've been reinfected with this virus. And I'm just sitting there, you know, it just depends upon where you get your news, what your narrative's gonna be because GOP people seem to be obstinate, stupid, and stubborn. You can literally pile up bodies in front of them and they're like, well, I don't see them bodies. I just want to go out there and do what I need to do, buck. So one of the things that I want to get across to you guys is this recession that we're in, and make no mistake about it, it is a recession because now all the personal finance YouTubers have to use the R word because it was like, we might have a recession. And I was like, we're already in the recession. And there are certain sectors of the economy that were in a recession before this that are gonna go into a depression. You can win in this, but you cannot win if you're ignorant. You cannot win if you don't have the data. 
You cannot win if you're predicated on a false narrative that this thing is a hoax or it's a joke. You can't win like that. Hopefully this finds you well. Hopefully no one you know is sick or you're not sick. And hopefully you don't get sick because there are many people who are getting sick and they're going to the hospital and they're not coming out. And that's just facts. Understand that the American economy was not as strong as people would lead you to believe. And there are many people who feel that this is just temporary layoffs. Um, I'm here to tell you that if this thing goes on long enough, each month that it goes on, there's gonna be businesses that are gonna close and they're not gonna open up again. And these employees, temporary layoffs will become permanent firings because of the lack of proper cash flow protocols. There are very few businesses that are stacking cash. And it, it should be a solid economic principle that if you run a business, that you must segment your cash and you must put money into a reserve for a rainy day. And this is how some smart businesses made it through the last recession, because they had cash reserves. They were able to keep their operations running, keep people employed, keep doing what they were doing, because they had cash. And many people did not learn from that lesson. With that, I want you guys, if you're able, because understand that many people who are going to get this message, you've already been impacted. The burglar is up in your house. The beast is, is chewing on your leg bone. I mean, you've been impacted. You've been laid off. You don't have any money. And it is what it is. But if that's not you, you need to start stacking your cash. You need to prepare for the best that you can because this thing is going to be longer and much harsher than the last recession. And if you're in the proximity, if you're in the proximity where you can actually survive this thing and do really well, that's a whole different game. That's a whole different game. And we'll talk about that in the next video.